This lesson is lesson two of our second module on similarity and triangles called Dilations Everywhere. A great quote for today, aim for success, not perfection. Never give up your right to be wrong because then you will lose the ability to learn new things and move forward with your life. Remember that fear always lurks behind perfectionism. David M. Burns. In the first quadrant of your math journal, write down your daily learning target, and today I've included an activator on estimating a scale factor. So our two daily learning targets are, I can apply dilations to two-dimensional shapes on a grid, and I can apply dilations by using the center of dilation and the coordinates of the vertices of polygons. When we're estimating the scale factor, if we take a look at uh, point C from the center of dilation of A, we notice that it's about twice the distance as B is from A, and maybe a little bit more. So the one that we came up with for our scale factor during class was about 2.25, 2 and a quarter, 2 and a third, uh, somewhere around there. In quadrant two of your math journal, write the problem, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. So for part A, find the dilation of quadrilateral ABCD with a center P and a scale factor of two. And I went through this process with you by drawing rays from each of those uh, vertices uh, to each of those vertices from the center of dilation. That helped me identify the distance horizontal horizontally and vertically that I would have to multiply by to find the dilated quadrilateral from the pre-image to the image. And this is the result. For part B, I want to find the dilation of triangle QRS with center at T. Notice how this center of dilation is outside the polygon, whereas this one on the left in part A was inside the polygon. So by creating a scale factor of two, I wanted to find the distance from the center of dilation to each of the vertices and double it. And then for uh, the second part in part B, have it. And these are the results. Dilation obstacle course. The fun thing about this one was investigating uh, dilations by constructing rays on a blank plane, an open plane. So there are no grids in this case. So just looking at the first one, which we did together, <clears throat> we notice that any time I'm trying to dilate a point from a center of dilation to another point, in order for it to be dilated, it has to stay along that line. And we discovered that the answer to one, which I believe was five times as a scale factor uh, away from A as B is from A, we discovered that the answer was I just by uh, looking at this. But we could have also used our distance or length and measured each of these. So the rest was up to you to work through. And to synthesize the center of dilation, the point being dilated, and the image of the point after dilation must all lie on the same plane. A scale factor of one does not move any points. If the scale factor is not one, only one point does not move, and that's the center of dilation. Another great activity that we investigated was called many dilations of a triangle. And just by looking at this applet, the nice feature about this is it allowed you to explore that as that triangle dilated either larger or smaller, those vertices stayed on that ray. That reemphasizes our understanding that as we dilate away from the center of dilation, it remains on those rays that connect through the vertices. So to synthesize, the smaller triangles come from scale factors less than one, while the bigger triangles correspond to scale factors larger than one. The original triangle itself can be as coming from a scale factor of one, because we can multiply those distances by one and it stays the same. All the triangles have the same angles and orientation in the plane. 
A few other points worth discussing include any of these triangles in dilation of any other with center P. The lines from P contain corresponding vertices of the triangles in the sense that these points map to one another via the dilations taking one triangle to another. And then we looked at another uh, group team talk activity, uh, getting perspective. And this is looking at two different applets, uh, one with a center uh, C, where we're trying to dilate P with a scale factor of 4. So opening that applet, we work through this one together. And then I had you do the second one on your own. Key concept and procedure. So in your notes, in your math journal, using colors and tools to make this process more meaningful to you, write the key concept and write the steps out that help guide you in dilating correctly. Digging deeper, we used a card sorting activity to compare different dilations with various numbers, scale factors, and the like. To synthesize, a dilation maps a circle to a circle, a quadrilateral to a quadrilateral, and a triangle to a triangle. If the center of dilation for a polygon is one of the vertices, then that vertex is on the dilated polygon. If the scale factor is less than one, then the dilated image is smaller than the original figure, and if the scale factor is larger than one, then the dilated image is larger than the original figure. So again, we keep re-emphasizing these things in different ways with different activities uh, to help uh, strengthen that conceptual understanding. A challenge activity was to take a look at this. I've already provided the solution uh, with scaling this triangle larger and smaller. And in fact, this uh, is representative of an earlier activity that we did uh, in this lesson. But the challenge question is, what happens when you multiply by a scale factor of negative 1? Well, we kind of get the sense, and we figured this out, that if we multiply by 1, a, b, c will be the same size, but the negative will actually flip it or inverse it to the other side of the center of dilation, like so. In quadrant 3 of your math journal, write the problem, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. We worked through identifying this dilation. We first labeled the center of dilation, which is at <clears throat> 3, 0. We noticed that from that point of dilation to this vertex of the smaller uh, triangle, it's only a unit of 1. But the second triangle, which is larger, is 3 units away. So I had to take that 1, multiply by 3, to get the new measurement, which means that the scale factor is 3. In quadrant four of your math journal, reflect on your progress in matching today's learning targets. Rate your self-confidence and explain why you gave yourself that score. <clears throat> Again, I've assigned uh, 10 Khan Academy uh, uh, activities. That includes some videos and some exercise activities. And then make sure that you've completed your four quadrants and your notes for today's lesson. Please be here, be ready, be respectful, and you will be great at Griffin. And remember to be kind to one another. Have a great day.